Welcome back, Girish. Thanks, Prana. Okay, uh, we we just were learning on derivatives. Yes, we did that. We did a little types on types of derivatives. Yes. And what was left was the difference between the OTC derivative and the exchange, exchange rate, rated derivatives. Yeah. So you can also uh, pinpoint between the forward and a future. So basically, a forward is an OTC derivative yeah. uh, instrument. Okay. And the rest other like futures, options, all these are your exchange rated derivative instruments. Yes. Right. They both so are actually instruments. Yes. This is an instrument. Basically, this is also an yeah. instrument. And when we were talking about forwards and futures, we were saying that there is a basic difference between them, which we are going to explain later. Mm -hmm. So here we dif uh, differentiate between a forward and a future contract, vis-a-vis -vis OTC versus your exchange trader. Okay. okay. So when we said that forward contract is a contract between two parties, wherein they try to hedge their risk. Yeah, right. right. So counterparty risk is maximum as it is decentralized and depends upon individual. So for example, I am I, I undergo a contract with you mm -hmm. to hedge my risk. So suppose at a future date you might default or I might default. Mm. So that is the biggest risk in an OTC derivative uh, product. Mm. Vis a vis, if you compare it with an exchange traded deriv trade derivative, the, there is a minimum counterparty risk as the exchange assumes risk of default. So this is the major difference between an OTC derivative and an exchange traded derivative. Can you can you just Explain this in a little detail. What do you mean by a uh, counterparty risk and how does this work? Uh, for example, if you are taking a forward contract. Let's say X takes a forward contract. With Y. Okay. Forward contract with Y. So they undertake a contract wherein X says that I'll sell you my commodity produce say at a future date one month from now at a particular price say 1000 rupees commodity to be sold at 1000 1000 yes right so uh, here after, after, after one, one month. month so here time is specified your price is specified as on today so so the product is specified which is commodity let's say a product specified time specified and price specified, price specified. as on today this is yes. as on today when we are entering into a forward contract yes and this contract would be executed after one month absolutely say for example on the date of execution right. there will definitely be change in the price of the commodity right so, so let's let's take this example also this is let's say january january and now now comes the situation of february february right right so what so happens in february so for example on february if the price rises to say 1200 so you're saying commodity a moves up and reaches a price of 1200 1200 rupees right now come uh, the party x is on a loss because he has to sell his produce at 1000 rupees only x x made a loss of 200 which is the difference between 1200 the current market price and minus 1000 the agreed the, price. The agreed price. Yeah. yeah. Since they're binded by the contract, right? There is a very huge possibility that X might default on this contract and might go into the market and sell it at a price of twelve hundred rupees. So what happens now is X decides to actually go in the market. Decides to go in the market and sell off at 1200, 1200 only. only so he defaults on this default defaults on this contract on this agreed contract right because there is no third party who is there to ensure the fulfillment of the contract because no third party binding the contract binding the contract absolutely right. so this is the biggest risk in a OTC instrument and this is what you say is this risk of default is the counterparty risk counterparty which happens in the OTC this which might happen which not which necessary which yeah. might happen might happen Possibly. by the very nature of the <coughs> right so this you're saying this counterparty risk the possibility of uh, that there is no possibility in an exchange yeah because there will be severe penalties and that's the third party which is binding the contract yeah. because Perfect. the exchange steps in and it ensures that uh, both parties meet their contract. Okay. 
So I am quite sure the counterparty risk would be understood now by the two, yes. uh, by by the by our viewers. Uh, the second is the terms of the contract are not standardized and depends on the parties, parties involved. involved. So, for example, when we can look back at the same example, mm -hmm. so that a uh, forward contract is uh, very lenient on the terms agreed between two parties. Right. So it could be for uh, say the quantity could be. 100 kilos, yeah. it could be 50 kilos, yeah. it could be anything which is uh, comfortable between two parties. Right. Right. But as we compare it with a exchange traded uh, instrument, there the terms of the contract are standardized. For example, there is a if there is a commodity contract, right. the quantity would be specified, say for example it is 100 kilo, right. the 100 kg is same for the buyer and the seller. Right. You cannot change the quantity under the contract what you can do is take a multiple contract right so so for example if you want to hedge your uh, 200 kgs you right. can take take two contracts of 100 100 kg each so you're saying that if it's a 100 kg contract which isn't specified and you want 200 kgs you can you will you will take two into 100 which is that you will take two contracts two contracts of 100 kg but if you each. want to hedge a risk of 150 kg you cannot do it on a exchange right so 150 kg is not possible because the terms are standardized it's standardized at 100 kgs in, in our example in our, in our right. example right perfect so so the terms are standardized terms in an exchange yeah. and that will always have its advantages and disadvantages because yes. if you are like in the case of 150 you're, you're stuck yes so what what really do you can you do okay so these are the two examples counterparty risk standardization so the third is no formal centralized limit on individual positioning Again, these are, or margining. Uh, yeah. Again, these are types of measure adopted by the exchange to ensure that there is no counterparty risk. Right. Right. So, whenever you are talking about uh, futures or an exchange traded derivatives, there are uh, mechanisms set up by the exchange which ensures that there is no third co counterparty risk. So, positioning uh, uh, limits. Yeah. Is will will ensure naturally that a person might. Uh, cannot really uh, default, default, on default, default on his positioning limits will ensure defaults do not happen. Perfect. But for so example, in a forward contract, that's, that's the third uh, yeah. important difference. Let's go back and have a look. The last, uh, no formal rules for ensuring market stability and collective interest of market participant. Mm -hmm. uh, vis a vis your exchange credit, where you have the exchange setting up formal rules and regulation to ma maintain market stability and uh, safeguard which the safeguards the interest of market participant. So, basically, the main difference is that in OTC derivative, you have a counterparty risk right. which is minimized in your exchange traded derivatives. While in uh, OTC derivative, you have the terms of the contracts are not standardized, whereas you have a standardized terms uh, under the contract in a exchange traded derivative market. Right. So basically, I there are two types of uh, difference. I think I think I mean if you look at it from this perspective, everything is basically maintained on a thing that the counterparty risk does not happen. Yeah. That is why the contracts have been standardized. That is yes. why the limits have been uh, there has been a, a limit on the uh, the the, uh, the positions that you can take. Yes. And also, uh, the rules have been ensured so that the the whole uh, counterparty risk again cannot happen. Easy. So I mean, I think I think the major difference is anything that is there to minimize the counterparty risk that is what the futures or, or the okay. exchange, exchange. exchange has uh, really incorporated. Yes. Perfect. So can we can we go? Uh, what what's in the next segment that we're going to cover? I guess what we'll do is we'll uh, stop the video here. Okay. Uh, because because in the next. Uh, segment we are going to cover on uh, the exchange traded currency futures. So let's have a look at exchange traded currency futures in detail in the next okay, video. We'll do that in the next time.